Just a few steps away from Grand Central Station, you will see a large pink dog statue in a window. This is the new location of the American Kennel Club Museum of the Dog. While this isn't the first AKC Museum of the Dog, it's the first time the AKC Museum of the Dog and AKC Collection are both on display together. From 1982 to 1986, the museum was located in the New York Life Building. But for the past 32 years, it was located in St. Louis, Missouri. This year, the museum has moved to the Park Avenue location where the AKC headquarters, library, and archives are located. Why? In St. Louis, the museum's attendance had been dwindling, and there was a desire to unite the AKC and its own collection with the museum. New York City was the next big step, according to Brandy T. Hunter, the AKC Vice President of Public Relations and Communications. She mentioned, the AKC Museum of the Dog has one of the most beautiful collections of dog art in the world. For years, it was cared for and appreciated in St. Louis County, but then they decided it was time to display this wonderful collection in one of the world's finest destinations for art. This newly designed space at 101 Park Avenue, which is where the American Kennel Club has its headquarters, displays art, paintings, figures, sculptures, and even rare pieces from famous dog artists including Sir Edward Lancy, who was Queen Victoria's favorite painter, Maud Earle, and others all across two floors. For its Manhattan reincarnation, the collection was updated with interactive exhibits like Find Your Mask Kiosk that asks you to say woof and take photos of you to match you with the AKC registered breed that is most like you. I happen to be a Manchester Terrier. Also there's a Meet the Breeds touch screen where you can explore different breeds, features, traits, and histories. More than 180 pieces of dog art and half a dozen interactive digital exhibits line two floors and three stories of the New York's newest museum. The museum officially opened on February 8, 2019, but we at Acme Canine attended their grand opening brunch on Sunday, February 10th. The museum director, Alan Fossil, says most people will spend at least an hour exploring the exhibits, but he said you could even spend longer if you get consumed by the digital Meet the Breeds table, which lets you interact with and explore the characteristics of all 193 AKC-recognized breeds. On the top floor, you'll find a digital interactive puppy training. The AKC has taken a 10-month-old Labrador named Molly and put her in a motion capture suit and had her go through her basic obedience drills. Then they transferred that to a screen where you actually train the avatar of that dog in real time through voice and hand signals. As you can see here, it works pretty well, but not exactly like training a real dog. Museum visitors can also download an app to learn more about the exhibits, and kids can download an app where Artie the dog guides them through the museum, kind of like a Pokemon Go. There are also activities tables on the top floor where kids can create artwork and display it on the community wall. The museum also presents famous dogs throughout history, including Edward VII's Wire Fox Terrier Caesar, who was part of the King's 1910 funeral procession. Likenesses of U.S. presidents also made the cut. There are paintings of George H.W. Bush's English Springer Spaniel Millie and George W. Bush's Scottish Terriers Barney and Miss Beasley. The museum has had a long time approval of the former First Lady of the United States, Barbara Bush. There is a dedication to Smokey the Yorkshire Terrier who crawled through a pipe in Luzon during World War II to reestablish communication between American units and also served as a therapy dog for the wounded in the Pacific. You can also pay your respects to the remains of Belgrave Joe, the fox terrier who more or less set the standard for the breed. The museum has a 2,000 year old paw print, a fossil of a dog, and a life-size sculpture of Great Danes a, with the giant wire dog sculpture which hangs over the AKC filling studio, hundreds of bronze and glass figurines and educational materials about breeding, dogs with jobs, and more access on giant screens. From dog astrology to knitting with dog hair guides, the extensive reference library has information of all sorts. 
I even found a dog drawing book which I had as a child which inspired me to learn the breeds and try to draw them. One thing that was missing was the blue tick coonhound on their shelves, which we will be donating to the AKC so that they do have a representative of that. This museum is really a place for dog lovers, and when you're in New York, please stop by and visit it.